we are looking at uh, applications of pressure in uh, gases and liquids. So our first application is actually the working of the bicycle pump. So here is a, a typical diagram of a, a bicycle pump. So you need to know its parts. We have the spring, the handle, we have the leather washer, the bar, the barrel, and uh, to, to the valve. This one is a connection to the uh, valve of the tire to be filled with the air. So <clears throat> before the bicycle pump is used, we usually connect uh, this end to the valve of the tire. Remember, the valve of the tire is usually uh, rubber. It is usually rubber. So, uh, when uh, actually the handle of the bicycle pump is pulled in this direction, that is when the handle is moved upwards, the leather washer will also move upwards. Now, remember that whenever the leather washer moves upwards, it means the volume of the air below the barrel will actually increase. That is, the volume increases, therefore, it means that the air that was initially below the leather washer in this barrel will actually expand. Now, whenever air expands, its pressure will reduce. You will understand it better when you learn the Boyle's law, uh, which says that actually pressure will be inversely proportional to volume. So when the air below the leather washer expands, its 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 uh, pressure reduces. So when the pressure is low inside the barrel, it means now the atmospheric pressure acting from outside is now greater than the pressure of the air below the leather washer. So the atmospheric pressure acting on the air from outside being stronger, it actually forces or it pushes actually the air into the barrel past the leather washer. So remember in this case actually the leather washer acts as a valve it acts as a valve so the air actually uh, is pushed through these uh, ends into the barrel now so remember the pressure of the air inside the barrel is lower than the pressure of the air inside the bicycle tube or the bicycle tire so because of the greater pressure in the bicycle tire it causes the valve of the bicycle tire to close such that when the handle is pushed up actually air is just trapped in the barrel but does not enter the uh, tire because its valve is closed due to the high pressure in the tire now when the handle is pushed down when it is now pushed down it means the leather washer will also be pushed down now, whenever the leather washer is pushed down, remember there is air that has been added in here due to the atmospheric pressure. So the air that is below the leather washer is compressed. That is when the handle is pushed down, when the uh, leather washer is pushed down. The air inside the barrel is compressed. Whenever air is compressed, it means its volume has reduced. When the volume reduces or when the air is compressed, it means its, its pressure increases. Its pressure increases. So because of the uh, high air pressure of the air below the leather washer, that pressure actually causes the leather washer to press against the walls of the barrel. So in this case, the leather washer acts as a piston. It acts as a piston to prevent air from getting outside the barrel. So because of the compressed air, which has a high pressure, that high pressure forces the valve of the bicycle tire or the bicycle tube to open. When that valve opens, because of this high air pressure that is uh, of the air that is compressed, this forces the air to enter the bicycle tire. Because now this air is compressed, it has a high pressure than the pressure of the air inside the bicycle tire. So during this process, actually, uh, it is observed or it is noticed that uh, the barrel feels warmer why? Because of the work done in compressing the air. Remember that work done, some of it is lost in form of heat. That's why the uh, barrel feels somehow warmer. So we look at the second application, which is uh, the working of the lift pump. So a lift pump is actually used to raise water from a well. So we have, uh, it has its parts. You can see the parts here. We have the planker, we have the side tube, we have a piston. 
we have cylindrical metal barrel, we have the lever, valve P, valve Q. So how it works, during the upstroke, the plunger is moved upwards. Now, when the plunger moves upward, it means the piston will also move upwards. Whenever the piston moves upwards, so before even uh, actually the lift pump is used, we usually fill the water above the piston. That process is called uh, priming, the process of filling water above the piston in a lift pump so that to initiate its working, it is called uh, priming. We call it priming. So when the plunger is moved up, uh, the weight, because of the uh, weight of valve P and the weight of the water above valve P, that is the priming water, it causes the valve P to close. Now, when valve P closes and the plunger is moved up, remember when the plunger moves up, this valve and the piston also moves up. So it means uh, volume is increased here. Now, whenever volume increases between uh, Q and P, it means now the air above valve uh, Q will actually expand. When the air expands, the pressure inside the barrel reduces below the atmospheric pressure. Now, the atmospheric pressure acting on the water in the well being greater than the pressure of the expanded air above valve Q, it actually forces valve Q to open and forces the water to enter the barrel. Now, the process of moving up and down the plunger continues until water fills uh, the space between valve Q and valve P, until the water actually fills this region. During the downstroke, that is where the plunger is moved down, meaning when the plunger is moved down, it means uh, because of the, uh, the weight of the water above valve Q and the weight of valve Q, it actually causes valve Q to close. So valve Q closes because of its weight and the weight of the water above it. Now, when the plunger is moved uh, downwards, it means that actually the piston uh, near valve Q will actually compress the water. So when water is compressed, the pressure due to the force applied on the plunger on this water forces valve P to open up. When valve P opens up, it actually, because of the pressure uh, exerted by the plunger uh, on the water or the piston on the water, it forces the water to actually move out and uh, jets out through the side tube. Now, a lift pump has disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that it cannot raise water above 10 meters. Why? Because it relies on atmospheric pressure. And remember, the barometric height for water is 10 meters. That is at sea level. So if you want to raise water above 10 meters, actually, a lift pump won't help you. So that is the disadvantage of a lift pump. It cannot raise water above 10 meters, since that is the barometric height of water. So to correct or to remedy this problem, we prefer using what we call a force pump. So here is the diagram of a force pump. Now, this is how a force pump works. During the upstroke, the plunger is moved up. Whenever the plunger moves up, that means the air between S and the piston, that is the air in the barrel between S and the piston. Remember when the plunger moves up, it means the volume has increased. Therefore, the air above valve S, that is the air between valve S and the piston expands. Whenever air expands, its volume reduces. Uh, no, whenever air expands, its pressure, the volume increases, but the pressure reduces. So because the pressure of the air above valve S has actually reduced below the atmospheric pressure, it means now the atmospheric pressure of the acting on the water in the well is now greater than the pressure of the air between valve S and the piston. So atmospheric pressure being greater, it actually forces valve S to open and the water is forced into the barrel. The process of moving up and down the plunger continues until water fills the region between valve S and the piston. Now remember at the same time, valve T does not open. Why? Because the, uh, remember that the pressure acting on the piston from upwards, that is from P, it is still atmospheric pressure. 
and because atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure of the air inside the barrel that has actually uh, the air that has expanded and therefore its pressure is low so because this is still atmospheric pressure valve T does not open because atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure of the expanded air inside uh, the barrel now during downstroke during downstroke the plunger is moved down when the plunger is moved down it means the water between uh, above valve s is actually compressed due to the weight of the water above valve s and the weight of the same same valve s that weight causes valve s to close now when valve s closes it means water cannot, cannot uh, move back to the well so water is trapped here now when you continue exerting pressure or exerting force on the water within the barrel that pressure forces valve t to open up when valve t opens up it means water actually jets into chamber c up to maybe a certain height maybe somewhere here now as the water moves up air is also trapped above uh, water in chamber c during the uh, uh, the upstroke that is, remember we had the downstroke, then we have the upstroke. During the upstroke, valve T closes. Why? Because of its weight and the weight of the water above it. During now the next downstroke, uh, during the next downstroke, so we have uh, compressed air here. Remember when air is compressed, now actually the level of the water uh, drops. Therefore, it means uh, the air above here actually expands. When the air expands, it means there is a pressure difference therefore the water flows out through P uh, continuously now what is the advantage of a force pump over a lift pump so a force pump has an advantage over a lift pump in that because of this compressed air one it allows continuous flow of water two is that a force pump can raise water above uh, the barometric uh, height of that water that is above 10 meters why because the, the level, the height to which a force pump lifts water does not depend on gravity. It does not depend on gravity. It depends on the force that is applied during the downstroke. So that is the advantage of using a force pump. One, it allows continuous flow of water. Two, it can be used to raise water above 10 meters. Above 10 meters. Now we also look at uh, what we call the siphon. So a siphon is actually used to uh, raise a liquid, uh, maybe to draw a liquid from uh, a given uh, area, which is a raised area, maybe to a lower area. For example, when you want to remove actually a liquid from a tank, you want to draw a liquid from a tank, maybe to another point. Now remember the pressure acting on the water inside uh, this particular container is atmospheric pressure. Remember we also said that pressure in liquids increases with depth or in fluids increases with depth so that means that the pressure at point a is lower than the pressure at point c or alternatively the pressure at point c is greater than the pressure at point b and at point a why because point c is lower and therefore the pressure acting at point c will be the summation of atmospheric pressure that is the pressure at a plus the pressure due to this column so the pressure at point c will be given by pa plus h rho g where p is the pressure at point a which of course is the atmospheric pressure remember the pressure at point a is the same as the pressure at point b because they are at the same horizontal level according to the pascal's principle which actually said that uh, pressure in uh, fluids uh, is equally transmitted to all uh, parts of the enclosed liquid or fluid now there are conditions which must be satisfied for siphoning to work one is that the level of uh, part C, that is one level of the tube, that is the part C, must be lower than the level of the liquid, that is part A. So one end of the tube must be lower than, or must be, must be at a lower depth, a greater depth than the level of the liquid. The second condition for a siphoning to work is that the tube must not rise above the barometric height of the liquid being drawn. For example, the barometric height for water is actually 10 meters. That is at sea level. So this level, from the level of the liquid, this height, from here up to where the tube rises, 
must not exceed 10 meters otherwise the siphoning will not work the third condition for a siphon to work is that one end of the tube must be dipped in the liquid for example here we have one end dipped here then the other end is not dipped in the liquid then the last condition for siphoning to work is that uh, the tube must first be filled with the liquid to be emptied with no bubbles of air why because remember that air exerts pressure so it will actually interfere with the atmospheric pressure uh, drawing this liquid from the container downwards thank you